Lynn is a truly remarkable town. Its heritage as a Hanseatic port during the Middle Ages sets it apart and shaped a good deal of its heritage and current architecture. This short piece is being released to celebrate St George's Day, April the 23rd, which is also Shakespeare's birthday in 1564 and, ironically perhaps, the date of his death in 1616 at the age of 52. St George's Guild existed in Kings Lynn from the year 1376. Their brick guild hall was built by the 1420s. In 1445, the first recorded theatrical performance was held, a nativity play at a guild hall feast. During the Great London Plague of 1592 and continuing through 1593, Shakespearean players came to Kings Lynn and performed at the guild hall. Subsequently, Shakespeare created roles specifically for Robert Armin, King's Lynn's forgotten clown. Clown in the sense then meaning comedian. St George's Guildhall has periodically been a working theatre ever since 1445 up to the present day. Yes, there have been many changes in its fortunes over the centuries, not the least of all perhaps being the threat of its demolition in 1945. Alex Penrose was then the Guildhall saviour, leading a project to convert the whole site into an art centre, retaining the theatre at its centre and passing it to the National Trust. On July the 24th, 1951, Queen Elizabeth the Queen Mother opened the centre, heralding the first King's Lynn Festival, which continues to run annually today. Adjoining warehouses were converted in 1963 by Lady Fermoy in memory of her husband Lord Fermoy, formerly Mayor of Kings Lynn and its MP. In 1993, the Borough Council took over the lease and from 1997 had responsibility for programming and operation. Between 2011 and 2016, Kings Lynn Arts Centre Trust managed the galleries. In 2019, the National Trust, Borough Council and the newly formed Shakespeare's Guildhall Trust began discussions to develop the vision to promote and safeguard this unique theatrical heritage and provide a sustainable business plan for the St George's Guildhall, Britain's oldest working theatre building. Thanks for joining us as we explore the past, present and future of St George's Guildhall. We'll be examining the evidence that Shakespeare played here. And along the way, we'll highlight the role of Shakespeare's Guildhall Trust and its dedicated volunteers. Hello, and welcome to the Guildhall of St George. My name is Leslie, and I am your guide. Situated near the medieval Tuesday marketplace, St George's Guildhall has a rich and varied history. The building extends all the way from King Street to the historic quaysides of the Great Ooze. Dr Paul Richards has researched when the Guildhall was built. We know the building was here in 1428. Then again, of course, we know the first play here was 1445. But in 1428, um, the building was here, and I guess it was the 1420s, because all the evidence points to that. Dendrochronology, testing the dates of timbers up above us and so on, um, that's consistent with that. And the brick type as well, which is very similar to the bricks on the south gate, which was 1430s. So it's, um, it was here then, it was um, built for the St George's Guild, um, a very rich guild, rich Lynn merchants who'd earned all their money to build it. Because when I think of buildings, I always think about how did they get their money to do that? And in King's Lynn, it was um, trading, especially with the Hanseatic League in the Baltic, with the German cities of uh, Lübeck um, and Danzig, and in the North Sea, uh, Hamburg and Bremen. They were major trading partners of Lynn and the big Lynn merchants made most of their money trading with the Hanseatic cities. And this wealth was invested in these sorts of buildings. The timber seemed to have come from East Anglia or the East Midlands. So um, a grand building, and it would have rivaled the other guild hall, which is the guild hall of the Holy Trinity in the Saturday marketplace. There had been a St George's Guild in Lynn in 1376, but not just in Lynn, all across Europe, because after the plague, I don't know how it came about, but if you prayed to St George, um, that gave you relief from the plague. From plague to pandemic, St George's Guildhall has seen its fortunes rise and fall. It's been a courthouse and a wine and grain store with loading bays on the quayside, 
and it still has an ancient undercroft that can flood with water at high tide. In 2019, Shakespeare's Guildhall Trust comes into the story. The Trust was formed in order to consolidate a vision to unify the entire uh, premises and these very complicated lease arrangements that are going on at the moment um, and to try and create a new vision that would be sustainable, that would build on the wishes of the people who left the Guildhall to the National Trust in the 1950s um, and create a lasting asset for the community in Kings Lynn that would see it preserved and used as the oldest working theatre in Britain and as the only theatre in the world that can claim Shakespeare performed um, and, and, and put some new life into the premises to keep it alive for future generations. And so we've been putting events on, ticketed events, fundraising events, putting youth and community at the heart of all of our performances. But we've also recruited volunteer guides. We've had over 24 volunteer guides who've been sitting, welcoming and showing visitors around the Guildhall um, on a daily basis right up until lockdown. One of the volunteer guides is Leslie Kemp, who formerly worked for the NHS and has lived in Kings Lynn for over 40 years. Please follow me. This board shows you various stages of our history. Part of it will show you how it was in 1766. This gentleman will need no introduction. He would have played with Pembrokesman when they came to play here in 1593. The acoustics are fantastic. The roof was obviously built by somebody who built ships. They knew what they were doing. If I go down to the front, without a mic, you will understand what I am talking about. To be or not to be, that is the question. This board is a plan of the people that actually donated and, if you like, bought a seat within the theatre. There is the Queen, Queen Mary, Earl and Countess of Leicester, National Farmers Union, the Kings Lynn and District Branch, West Norfolk and Kings Lynn High School for Girls, Gaywood Park Girls School, the West Norfolk and Kings Lynn General Hospital, where the staff would have actually clubbed together to make the donation. These are the actual brass plaques that would have been on the seats. Kings Lynn Rotary Club, Lincolnshire Canners Limited, and Edward VII Grammar School. In addition to schools, royalty and local companies, the bronze seat labels are dedicated to personalities of the time. Poet and historian Sir John Betjeman, comedian Joyce Grenfell, Peter Pears the tenor and the world famous violinist Yehudi Menuhin. I wish I could say that William Shakespeare had his own seat plaque to mark his presence but the evidence that he played in St George's Guildhall is strong. The key to this is the Earl of Pembroke's company, because most of these travelling companies had a patron, an aristocratic patron or even a royal patron. Um, they, we know they left London because of the plague, and we know in 1592 and 1593 they were travelling in East Anglia and the Midlands. We know that. We also know through scholarly texts um, that um, Shakespeare was with them. We know from published material and other um, scholarly examinations that Shakespeare was with the Earl of Pembroke's men. We know that the Earl of Pembroke's men played Shakespeare. We know that Shakespeare was also an actor and Andrew Gurr says that uh, his scholarly investigation to show that Shakespeare was almost certainly with them at that time. We also know they were in Lynn because in the mayoral year 1592 to 93 um, there's a record in the town in the town archive there's a record that 20 shillings was paid to the Earl of Pembroke's men who would have gone to the mirror and asked for a license to play. So all these bits of evidence add up and crisscross. The needs of modern audiences are very different from those of the times of Shakespeare. Ivor Rowlands has a vision. A to bring the building up to, to modern standards, to refurbish it, to create proper access, to put in modern toilets, but also to put on a programme of activities and events and to build on the uh, heritage aspects of the site to create sufficient footfall and activity, economic activity, whether it's through performances, through selling teas and coffees, through heritage visitors, in order to make it sustainable for the future. So, 
There you have it. St George's Guildhall is a truly remarkable building, but more remarkable is the passion and dedication to preserve it to keep Britain's oldest working theatre working. <laughs>